Hello and welcome back to the Black Eye Podcast. I am your host, Michelle. How have you been? Uh, oh, it's been a minute since we talked and you know how it is. Oh my God. This thing, hold on, let me get my cough. Right here. This thing that I want to talk and share with you today is by a man named... There we go. I can hear myself because I can't hear myself. All right. By a man named Killer Mike. He is a content creator here on YouTube. And he was fortunate enough to invite a man named Robert F. Kennedy Jr. to his show, which is kind of a barbershop setting. Now, what I appreciate about this whole show is that Robert F. Kennedy is doing something that other potential candidates are not doing. He's visiting communities and he's sitting down and he's having some conversations, a myriad of conversations. So for that, he gets my thumbs up, but there's still a lot to do. and There's still a lot to talk about. So without further ado, we're gonna talk about a particular part in the show in which black men were talking to <laughs> Robert F. Kennedy Jr. about child support. Yeah. Not any of the issues in the community, not the educational issues, not the financial issues, not the steady decline of the neighborhoods as businesses constantly are leaving, uh, leaving our neighborhoods, leaving the children and the parents and everyone practically destitute. Not that at all. No, no, no. Child support. And how child support is unconstitutional. And what John F., excuse me, not John, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is going to do to, you know, fix it. Without further ado, let's get into it. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And the Barbershop Talk right here on the Black Eye Podcast. I am so outdone. I can't tell you how outdone I am by this whole conversation. But it also lets you know exactly. If you have doubts about the state of the Black community, then you, if you have, this will certainly most certainly allay any of those doubts as to exactly how men are thinking about the black community. Because they're thinking only about themselves, not about your kids. Not about them at all. Not about their responsibility as fathers. Nope. Nope. About why they don't want to give money to take care of their child. They want to, they want the state to rely on them morally. These same men who got up on these platforms and told other men that the best thing they can do is have a bevy of other women, have a rotation. Yeah, morally. I believe we did do that, though. We did. Way back in the day before there was child support in 1950, they put in the child support law. It was a court-ordered child support. So when people got divorced, they wanted to make sure, the, the state wanted to make sure that the children were taken care of, and they ordered child support for those women and, you know, you know for the parents, for the mothers, for the children. That's what welfare is for. Welfare is for nobody but the children. It's not for the woman. It's not for the man. It's for the kids so that the kids can eat, so that the kids will be okay and provided for. Because no society that cares nothing about their kids is going to prosper. No community who cares nothing for their kids can prosper. But you can't tell these men that. You can't tell them that at all. If patients died, if they were put on ventilators, if they were put on ventilators, $3,000 a dose. Fathers have better rights in the court system. <clears throat> You know, I, I have to tell you, I have never thought about that issue. Um, I, you know, I, I paid child support. I paid a lot for child support. 
Um, but I've never, you know, until you brought it up a little earlier tonight, it's not an issue that I, you know, consider. I think most it's regulated on the state rather than the federal government. But I would love, love to hear what you, um, you know, what you think, because, you know, mostly I've heard people argue that um, if you father a child, that you have a responsibility for that child. Oh, absolutely. And, so, so you tell me what you're, you know, mother or child, well, you got I that know, responsibility. So you heard him, right? <clears throat> Already, the disparity is apparent. Black men don't want to take care of their kids. That's what I got out of it. You can argue with me all you want to, but that's the argument. That's the discussion. Robert Kennedy says, it's my understanding that if you father a child, you're responsible for that child. To which some person out of the clear blue sky says, the mothers are responsible too. Yeah, the mothers are responsible. The mothers take responsibility. You see, under the law, the child support law, child support is legal because it is based on the principle that both parents have a responsibility to support their children, regardless of the parent's marital status. The principle is recognized in the laws of 50 states and the District of Columbia. This is what Robert F. Kennedy just said. It is agreed upon that if you father a child, it is your responsibility to take care of the child. To which the guy says, and the mothers are responsible too. The mothers are responsible. The mothers provide the home. The mothers pay for the clothes. The mothers, if they have a car, they drive that child to and from child care, daycare. I would argue that it costs more money for the mother to take care of the child than it does for some of the fathers to take care of the child. Mothers are working. I did a podcast where the mother was working six days a week. She couldn't afford to fill up her tank. He had three children. She was married, by the way. Three children. $325 a week. A month, I'm sorry. For three children or something like that. They were in Florida. He made a grand announcement. I'm not going to pay $325 a month. So guess what she's responsible for? Housing, clothes, school. I don't know that if these men even know that anything that has to do with school is money. Child care. And other incidentals that nobody even mentions that are expense pertaining to children. That's all on her. And in certain states, if there is a child support order, she qualifies, she doesn't qualify for food stamps. She doesn't qualify for any financial aid at all. Because it is agreed upon all the states, all 50 of them, and the District of Columbia, that the parents are responsible for the children. Let's go on. Yeah, you know, I know, I know my, but, my, but, but before, before, because I know TJ ready to be passed that baton because he got a whole different. But I, I just, I just feel from the standpoint that I've watched it. I've watched my peers. I've Destroy. watched people I don't know. I've seen people with money Destroy. struggle with this. I've seen people without money struggle with this. So this is something I feel that is huge. First of all, he's full of shit because people without money, with money, don't struggle to pay child support. But go ahead. And from the standpoint too, we're dying behind the stress 
behind how we're treated in the court system, not being able to see our kids, paying this money. We don't, we, we can't even take care of ourselves because we're shoveling out so much money to right. take care of the kids. Nobody's saying that we don't have a responsibility, but it's unfair and it's unjust. You know what I mean? That what the court system is doing on behalf of fathers. And, you know, at one point in time, I was like, man, this is a us thing until yeah. I was in Cobb County. And I saw a white man get locked up like this because he paid child support, but he didn't give the attorney his due. So I'm going to let you touch on it, but I, I know I mean, that was I mean, a real Let me thing. ask you guys, is this, what, what is your solution for that? Because you yeah, want to make right sure here. that you... That's just right. so here. funny because the guy didn't pay the lawyer. I don't know any lawyers who are going to work for free. You know lawyers to work for free. If you do, let me know. But most lawyers are not going to work for free. So I don't know what that has to do with uh, child support. Yeah, he paid his child support, but he didn't pay his lawyer. That don't even have anything to do with the conversation. I don't even know why he brought that up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, am TJ I am the author of How I Stop Child Support Legally. I represented myself in a two year hearing against child support and got my case dismissed for extrinsic fraud after 22 years. And as Josh said, men are treated as third world citizens in the United States of America. America has a Title IV D crisis. Title IV D of the Social Security Act is an enforcement to go after parents for money that was given out as a grant. Title IV A is a grant loan that's given to needy families. But yet we have an amendment in 1975, Title IV D, which goes after the fathers for non-custodial parents, deeming them, being finding them guilty in, in, in family court for abandonment. The, the, the issue is we're still operating under the procedures from 1935 when Title IV-A was implemented, when women couldn't work at that time. So when if men went to war, yes, there are programs that are needed to assist a woman because she couldn't work in 1935. But they did this amendment in 1975, which is Title IV-D of the Social Security Act, which enforces non-custodial parents to pay back a grant what is a grant first of all i was just looking at that law i was just looking at that law but i could tell you about that from my experience as a person who was alive in 1975 and whose mother was on welfare i remember it distinctly because to apply for welfare was a long arduous task you spent most of the day you had to sign the, the clipboard and then they would call your name and sometimes that would take all day sometimes it was quick not often but a lot of times it would take all day long at least in the state that i was in most of those women up until 1975 did not reveal the name of the fathers why because the fathers were not there. In many cases, many cases, and again, I'm not being scientific or anything like that, and I'm not delving in the depths of it, but those children were abandoned by their fathers. The father would leave, go off to live with somebody else, as, as men often did, got them a new girlfriend, got them a new boo, and most likely she was taking care of him and he was living a better life with the new girlfriend than he was, you know, with his kids. He didn't think about his kids. He really didn't think about his kids. In my case, my father was married. Worked at the post office. She had a good job. She, he had a good job. He didn't want nothing to do with me or my mother. So he abandoned us denied it because back then i don't think there was any kind of like testing or anything like that or if there were testing there was it was arduous all he had to do was say no i'm not the father what were they going to do so 
and, and I never forget this, the social worker who had been strung out, like she was exhausted that day because she had a lot of clients. You know, you'd see them one back to back, one after the other, all the different cases. All, oh, God. She was tired. And she and my mother were talking, and my mother, she said to my mother, doesn't make any sense how so many of these women are out here struggling to keep food on the table and roofs over these kids' heads, and the men are off somewhere living their best life. Now, I'm not saying that all men were living their best life, but a lot of them had gone on to another relationship and abandoned their kids. And I remember when they said, this has to stop. We have to start making men responsible. We have to start going after them. Because not going after them is giving them carte blanche to do it all over again. They're leaving kids everywhere. So the United States government made the amendment and said, okay, from now on, we're going to go after them. Get, you have to give us the name. If you don't give us the father's name, your, your benefits could be delayed. And so they had to give the name. Well, the women had to give the name. Before they didn't, they would just say, yeah, he abandoned me. But after 1975, you had to give the name of the father in order to qualify or not have your benefits delayed. <clears throat> so that they could go after the father, so that the father could take care of the children. But many times the children were abandoned because the fathers were living good and the kids weren't. The father was driving a Cadillac and wearing suits and, and you know, over at his girlfriend's house, having a good time. She paying for everything or whatever he's supposed to be doing, working. And it had become, especially in the state that I was in, it had become... It, be, it became so well-known, so rapid. It spread so rapidly. It was... I just, wow. And that's why they had to come after them. I don't know why I lost that thought. I, I just went back to my childhood all of a sudden. I just, I remember the smell. You could smoke back then. So people would smoke. It was a long, arduous affair. And then sometimes you get a social worker who would talk to you like crap. Talk to your mother. Talk to the, these women like crap. These men don't understand what women, especially black women, had to endure just to get some money to, to feed you and keep a roof over your head. And for all that aggravation, the state said, no more of this. You have to be responsible. A grant is a gift, a gift that's something that's, oh. there's no counterbalancing payment yeah, also, have it didn't have anything to do back then with the with child support didn't have anything to do with your benefits they just wanted you to be responsible which you should be got people being thrown in jail with in for a debt which america what is it 28 usc 2007 there is no debt or prison right and then you have my what josh was saying with families you have, there's the supreme court case law uh what is it uh uh, uh uh, it, it, well, every natural parent has a fundamental liberty interest in the care, custody, and management over their children. You talk I about incentives. That. I heard you speak about due process. Due process is the backbone of our. Let me just let me just interrupt. There is a case, Georgia, and the Georgia Supreme Court. Child support is not unconstitutional. They want to say that it is, but it's not. And the reason why it's not unconstitutional is what I said, what I read earlier, that the family court, it's an agreement, just like Robert Kennedy said, among all the states, that both parents are responsible for the children. Both parents, no matter the marital status, responsible for the children. So the case he's talking about in Georgia which was ruled unconstitutional. It wasn't child support that was ruled unconstitutional. It was the way they collected the child support that was ruled unconstitutional. I think that they were adding, where is it? Uh, they were adding 
interest to child support. They were taking properties away from people. I mean, the way they were collecting child support was unconstitutional. Not itself. So the Supreme Court case ruled that the way they collected, they had to rework it. They had to, they couldn't do that anymore. Couldn't add interest. They couldn't put people in jail because they added interest to child support. They couldn't uh, take away people's property. They couldn't, uh, in, in short, harass people for being late or not in their child support. The way they were doing it was unconstitutional, not child support itself. So it also said, he's talking about this Holmberg was in Minnesota's administrative child support, the process, not child support itself, the process, how they were collecting child support was ruled unconstitutional, not child support itself. So here he is, he's already wrong. Uh, of the United States Constitution is the, the, the backbone of our republic. What are you prepared to do? You said you pay child support. How? I, I did. You I, did pay I, child yeah, support. So for, for many, many years. It's, um, so here's my question. You talked about executive orders, that we have three branches of government, executive, judicial, and legislative. The child support system somehow is operating in all three branches of government, which violates the separations of powers. This is a historic landmark case that took place in 2023. It's called SEC versus Cochran, which says that child support via child support services violates the separation of powers. You just out of your mouth, you said I can do exactly child support is not federal. Child support has nothing to do with the federal constitution. Child support is run by the states. I just read the the the, the uh, article here, here where child support is an agreement that the states, all 50 states have made. And let me add also international child support because, you know, other countries, if you go to another country, make a baby over there, they can come over here in this country and collect child support from you according to their laws, rules and regulations. Child support is international. No, I don't know. I thought y'all were smart. Anyhow, he can't make executive orders for the state because the state it is not a violation of the federal constitution. It's a state law. And only the states can rule whether or not the child support is unconstitutional toward their state, not toward the nation. So already he's wrong. He's twisting and, and double pretzering and he's, he, oh my God, he's like, he's doing all kinds of body, <laughs> what do you call it? Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, he's, he's, uh, he's an extortionist. Uh, extor is it extortionist? Yeah, but he's, he's. Giving it all, man. He's putting it all in there. He's putting all the stuff against the wall to see what's going to stick. And none of it does because, again, excuse me, <coughs> this has nothing to do with the federal government. It has everything to do with the state. Executive orders, I can't touch judicial. I can't do these things. But how is child support able to operate under the separate and violate the separation of powers what are you prepared to do being a person that paid child support at one point what are you prepared to do to stop these people from thinking that they are above the law and i just want to make a classic observation here a little observation these men are assuming that robert f kennedy is upset because he paid child support Already, there is an imbalance of understanding. He's fine with paying child support. It is assumed that you will pay child support. 
It is the thing that men do. You pay your child support because he fathered children and he is responsible. It never occurred to him to complain about child support. It never occurred to him to say, oh, my God, this wife, why do I, why do I have to pay child support? You know, why do I have to do that? It never occurred to him that they are struggling to make ends meet at the bottom of the barrel to pay child support. It is just the understanding that this is what men do. And then you have the black men in the room whose minds are so closed that they believe that every man suffers the same kind of affliction that they suffer, which is that we have to pay child support and we can't take care of ourselves. You see the inadequacy of thought there, right? You see the imbalance of what it takes to be a man there. You see the lack because if it's every other man, except the dusty thinking, and that applies to men, no matter your color, race, or creed, dusty thinking men complain about child support. But men who have substance don't think about it that way. They go and they say, well, I have to go do this and pay my child support. Of course I want my child to have the best possible situation. Of course I want my child to have a coat in winter. Of course I want them to have food. Of course I want them to have everything they need for school. This goes without saying. This is an agreement that they made, because believe it or not, women did not make these laws. Men made these laws. The men got together and said, this is our responsibility. Men take care of their children. They look down on men who didn't take care of their responsibility. They look down on men who didn't do that. Not women. They're trying to, this is where we're talking here, when they're trying to blame women for what men did. Men made these laws for you. I think it's funny that they're actually whining to the man whose <laughs> father or, or uncle might have had something to do with the laws that are on, a, on the books today. I think that's funny. And violating the separation of powers. It's violating our Constitution. Yeah, I mean, I paid child support because that's what I agreed to. I didn't never litigated it, and I was never, you know, but I, I have to, I, this is the first that I'm hearing about this issue. And I, you know, what you're saying to me, some of it I don't understand because I don't understand how a federal law, you know, child support is enforced by the states and family court. And I don't understand the relationship between the, the uh, federal social security says, what you, what was it Title IV? Well, it is Title IV-A is the, right. is the Social Security Act. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm interested to hear what you're saying is something I never have considered that this is a war on men. I always mm -hmm. assumed that uh, child support was something, you know, an obligation that that kind of everybody agreed you have to pay to take care of your child. But I, um, you know, all I can do is say that, I, you know, I want to listen to what you're saying and, and maybe start looking at it a different way. Yeah, and, it, and that's the thing. So it, it's not a, okay. the, the, the child. So Rick Kennedy says very nicely, I don't understand what your problem is. I don't understand what the issues are. I'm a bit confused about what you're talking about. But I'm going to go and, you know, find a way to address your issues. That's when you stop the conversation. That's a very nice way of saying, I'm done. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I don't understand what the hell you're talking about. The federal government, how does the federal government fig figure into this? He's a lawyer. He's a lawyer who had children and paid child support. He understands that the laws are not federal. So he's trying to understand where you're coming from, and he doesn't because he knows in his mind that the state is involved with child support. The state collects child support. The state and family court 
This is how they work. They come together. They find out what the wife, the mother makes. They find out what the father makes. And then they come to an agreement about how much money the father should contribute to the household where his children abide. There also should be a time where you get to have your visitation rights. When you come and see the children, when you are involved with your children. But most men don't really want that. Because I believe if you really wanted it, you would fight for it. You would fight for it. You'll fight for them sneakers. Let somebody come by your car and accidentally touch it. And have something kind of, oh my God, you'll fight for your car. You'll fight for some respect, some, you know, vague idea of respect, but you won't fight for your children. You'll fight for your right to see children. You won't make time to see your kids. But you want us to believe that the court is keeping you from your kids. See, just like you don't want to pay money, the what the woman doesn't want necessary. Let me let me put it this way. I know probably that women don't want you to come in and be bothered with the kids. She don't want to be bothered with you no more. She don't want to be bothered with you anymore. She's done. Just pay your child support and keep it going. That's what she wants. Why? Because she already knows in the relationship that you're not reliable. She already knows that. She already knows that you don't keep your word. She already knows that you, you run late. She already knows that you're disrespectful. She already knows that, you, that she's been disappointed. The whole relationship has been a big disappointment, maybe to you and her both. And she's thinking to herself, I don't want to put my kids through that. I just don't want to do it. The lady that I talked about earlier who worked the six days a week, couldn't fill up her gas tank. The man had to pay $320-some dollars a month, and he don't want to pay the $320-some dollars a month for his kids. And y'all can say, well, she should have chosen better. Well, she was married. Now what? Now what? She was married. And he got a divorce. He doesn't want to pay the money. All on her to pay. But you're going to sit here and you're going to tell this man that women are not taking responsibility for the children. The women are responsible too. Yes. And they take their responsibility. Yes. And they're out here doing the work. All you have to contribute is $323 a month. And then on top of that, she said, I would love to have a break. He's supposed to come every other weekend and take them. Take the kids out. Take them to his place. He doesn't do that. She said if he would just come take the kids, she wouldn't even be upset about the money. But he doesn't even show up to be with his own kids. He doesn't even show up. He's supposed to come every other weekend. He doesn't bother to show up. And now he wants, they want to say, well, I, I, you know, she doesn't allow me to see the kids. No, because she's already been through this crap with you. She's already done this with you. She's already been disappointed. She doesn't want to put the kids through that. And maybe, just maybe, that could be the wrong decision. Maybe you should let the kids see for themselves who their father really is. Maybe you should. I always propose that you should give the kids to the, to the fathers. They bitching and moaning and carrying on so much. Let them stay up all night with baby with colic. Let them, uh, you know, make sure that they come get their babies every other weekend and stay with them every other weekend. They get up three, four times a night or, or more and feed the kid, change the kid. Let them do that. And, and when it's your turn, honey, to, 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 you know, he wants to go out and he wants to have a little time with the boys and he wants to do this and he wants to do that. And he wants you to come over and can you take the children? for? I want you to say no. I want you to have plans. 
Even if it's just Netflix and chill. I want you to have plans. Say I can't do it. I can't change my plans. And let him be with the children. Let him stay with the kids. I wish that women trusted the men enough to do it. The, the problem is that you are not trustworthy men in the first place. Women don't feel safe with you. And because they don't feel safe with you, they don't, they don't put their children in an environment in which the children could be safe with you. Does that make sense? They're not safe with you. I don't feel safe with you. I don't trust you to go and take care of the kids. I don't trust you to be alone with the kids. If you're careless with my affection and my emotions and you just went out there and did whatever the heck you wanted to do, how do I know that you would protect our kids? It's a logical question. I'll support it. Yes, every person has a uh, a moral obligation to support their offspring, but when you're not following in your own procedures and you're taking men out of the, in order for to a woman to receive these benefits, the father can't be in the home pursuant to Title Four A. That's a lie. So the, the problem is they they're acting above the law. They're violating That's the separation of powers and. And it is it is unlawful. It violates the Constitution. Let me tell you why that's a lie. In 1968, King versus Smith, the man in the home law was overturned by the Supreme Court. Overturned by the Supreme Court. I said what I said. 1968. Overturned by the Supreme Court. Why is this acting up? Why is everything acting up? The reason why I wanted to get on the phone and show you this, because, you know, these men always like to talk about um, how there's a conspiracy of white men to tear the family apart. I want you to see these white men who struck down the law of a uh, man in the house. I want you to see that. Can you see it? I keep this on my phone. And whenever somebody comes up to me and wants to talk about how the white man is conspiring to keep them out the home, I show them the 1968 Supreme Court justices who struck down the man in the home law. 1968. These are the men. Can you see him? Oh, <laughs> it went out. 1968. Man in the home. I wrote it down here. 19, oh, my. I'm telling you, everything's acted up today. 1968. 1968. Man in the Home Act. Eight YT men. One black man. They're good marshal. Supreme Court justices. Man in the Home Act struck down. Now, let me see. I hate this. What the hell? Get out of here. It's getting on my nerves. All right. I want to take the moment to show you or to read to you because I actually could show you, but I don't, I'm, I'm just being lazy today. I'm not at my 100%. I wish I was because I would really be rocking here, but all right, here it is. 1968 King versus Smith ruled. Uh, I was right up here. That no matter what the woman or her her marital status, that a man could be in the home. It used to be that in the 60s, 
the when they if a man was in the home, it was assumed that he was taking care of his kids. Because once again, that is the belief of the time. If the man is in the home, it is his responsibility to take care of his kids. That's the prevailing belief. It's still the prevailing belief. So when she had a weekend friend over, he it was assumed that she he was going to take care of the kids. And she's like, no, he's just somebody who comes over. And they took her benefits, King. Denied her benefits. And in 1968, oh my God, I got a lot of shit in here. Uh, she, she fought them. She took it to court. She fought. It went all the way up to the Supreme Court justices. And they overthrew it as unconstitutional, which means that men could be in the home. It didn't matter the marital status. They ruled. I must have written it down somewhere. They ruled that the, the welfare, the, the, the services were for the kids, not for the adults. It had nothing to do with the adults, it had nothing to do with the mother. It had nothing to do with the father. It had nothing to do with whatever was in between. It only had to do with the children. And that the children were entitled to benefits no matter the mother's status. Welfare is about the kids, stupid. Not about the mother. Not about the mother living a good life. Not about you trying to ride the, the wave. No, it's about the kids. And it's a sad day when men do not understand that if the state is feeding your kids, it's a direct reflection on you. I don't care what anybody else says. It is a reflection on you. So he's, he's saying that it was required that the men were out of the home only for a while because it was overturned so do you mean throughout the whole 70s and the 80s when the men could have been in the home they chose not to be that couldn't be the thing could it this is what i was talking about the men abandoned their homes they abandoned them so the law was overturned you can be in the home now you can live there now because of the kids need if the kids need the benefit, that's what the Supreme Court says. The kids are entitled to it. And you still didn't come to the home. You still wasn't there. Daddy wasn't there. Because daddy was up the street with Shaniqua. That's what was going on. But they're gonna keep say they keep beating that same stupid drum. Welfare took black men at the home. No, it didn't. It it actually took all men out the home because it was assumed that if you were there, men take care of their kids, men get a job. Let's go on. But if you were living in the home, you would be, you would be presumably paying for, you know, everything that's going on in the home, your share, right? Right. So when you say you have an obligation, but there's... So the, only, the obligation only arises when you leave the home, right? No, the obligation is from when the child is born. So there's a Supreme Court case law that says when, not, when, yes, every natural person has an obligation to support their offspring, but when that obligation is reduced to a money judgment, therefore a debt, at that point, people are now being incarcerated for child support when it is actually unlawful pursuant to the United States Constitution. Yep, they already proved that was unconstitutional. They can't really put you in jail for that. My husband went to jail. A lot of men went to jail because they lost their jobs and they didn't pay child support. That is ruled unconstitutional. They can't do that to you anymore. Already been done already been done already been done but child support in and of itself 
is still constitutional. And we talk about due process. Due process is the backbone of our United States Constitution. Yet people are still being incarcerated. I guess they're, what they're uh, they're incarcerated for contempt of court. Is that? But mm -hmm. they're uh, is that why they're right? So yeah, in, in that's, a, court, that's, that's a loophole. In the course, of course, <laughs> to, to you, you yes. Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? No, child support payroll, like the other Yeah. All right. I wasn't going to jump on camera, but y'all is saying some interesting shit. Okay. I just wanted to interject here. Um, The new child support laws of Georgia in 2023, this is November 2023, because that's what he's talking about, Georgia child support laws. It says the article discusses uh, Georgia child support laws regarding calculating payments, support modifications, enforcement collections, and how to change support payment amounts. So... Wait a minute, that's not the thing I wanted to talk about. Anyways, it was not custodial minimum child support of $100 a month. Hold on. I apologize for that. I thought I had the, the right thing here. But anyways, it they had, I already talked about this anyways, that Georgia had to change how they collected the child support, not the child support itself. Let's go, brother. Really quickly, because what you asked for was a solution. It's something that I had been thinking about. Let me just jump. This is not an official endorsement at all. I do like a lot of what's been said here, so I'm going to stay out of the way. But just in matter of child support to help you better understand, um, child support in the case of what you're saying is you, you were married to your children's mother. Yeah. Uh, virtually. Well, most 70% of black children are born out of wedlock. So child support is against you day one. When you're when you're a black man, more likely, because more likely you're not married. Now, and, and this same thing I tell my daughter's boyfriends: don't get her pregnant. And she has a big, huge family that's going to take care of this baby. You're going to piss her off, and she's going to go file for benefits, or she's going to need them. In, in the case her mother needed them when she was a kid, me and her mother were together. We were not married, but her mother signed. You actually up. have this conversation with your daughter's boyfriend. Absolutely, yeah. That's. Never mind. I don't even want to discuss it. My energy just dropped by fifty percent just listening to that. No, I don't even want to address yes, it. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Scott, I, I tell them. I say, no. She understand now. She is. She is from a, a great family. Now, I know it's not the case for every girl, but she's from a big, huge family. Lots of aunts. She's going to be okay. But you're going to piss her off. You're going to leave her for another girl. You guys are going to fall out of love. She's going to play a lot of Chris Brown records, and she's going to say, "Fuck it, I'm going." <laughs> but I say that because. Me and her mother were together from day one. Her mother did not work. I did work. Her mother, I put through school. I did not put myself through school. I did everything I could to make sure that in case I died, this woman would be okay with my children. She signed up for TANF, welfare, that type of stuff, which helps. It helps to bridge, especially when you're a young family. We know our welfare system has been constructed in a way that excludes men. It gave women an incentive not to have men in there. It, gave, it, gave, it actually says... We'll come through your house and we'll search your house. And we'll search your okay, let me just stop right here because this is, I found what I was looking for. Um, because Robert Kennedy actually uh, addressed this. They didn't go into court because of necessarily child support. Um, they were held in contempt of court, which would result in fines or even jail time. Your wages could be garnished, your tax refunds could be intercepted, and your driver's license could be suspended. So it says here that because that's why they went to jail. They went to jail because they refused to pay child support. In conclusion, child support is not is not unconstitutional. It's a legal obligation that recognized and enforced by the state laws. If you're having, tr and, you know, you go talk to somebody if you have trouble. Uh,
Again, he keeps they keep talking about it being unconstitutional. Child support enforcement in the United States is primarily a state and local responsibility, with federal involvement being limited to specific circumstances. State agencies known as Title Four D agencies are by federal law to offer child support enforcement service to anyone who requests them. Child support enforcement services basically meant or means, as I understand it and as I have seen it work, is that if you have um, a refund of a refund, like a tax refund, and I think I explained this before, maybe in the other iterations of this podcast, if you have a state refund, the government enables the state to take your refund. That's pretty much what they do. They do not... um, Federal legislation like Child Support Recovery Act and the Deadbeat Parents Punishment Act, because there are deadbeat parents. And I can't believe that these men are framing this discussion as uh, a praise to being deadbeats, uh, have been enacted to prosecute the most severe cases of child support nonpayment. Convicted offenders under federal law could face fines and imprisonment, according to the U.S. Department of Justice, federal jurisdiction is only implicated in very limited circumstances in child support matters. So mostly the state doesn't, the federal government doesn't even bother. Federal law makes it illegal for an individual to willfully pay, fail to pay child support as ordered by a court in certain circumstances. In certain circumstances. So, for instance, if the child resides in a different state and support system and support payment is overdue for more than a year or surpasses $5,000, the individual can be federally prosecuted, according to the U.S. Department of Justice. Such a violation is considered a criminal misdemeanor, and the convicted offender could face fines and up to six months in prison. If the overdue payment extends beyond two years or exceeds $10,000, then the offense escalates to a criminal felony. And once again, I have to ask, why would you not pay your child support? Like, I don't understand why you wouldn't pay your child support. And these are very limited circumstances. I guess it's based on the state, but it's... it's It really... The federal government has very little to do with it. If you're that far behind that the federal government has to be involved in that's because the state probably sicked them on you you know for whatever reason but or you're going around making like a whole lot of babies and you know yeah, yeah. so know about you're, that. you're kind of set up from day one Hold on. you didn't know they looked under your bed and checked, uh, yeah, checked yeah 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 like, like, okay but ask somebody who <laughs> worked with that's why ben carson shouldn't have been running <laughs> um yeah. God bless me. I wanted to work on my brain, but not control my house. So back to child support. I think the solution is this, and I'm out your way. Um, Most of these men weren't born in the time when there was uh, the Man in the House Act. I just want to look it up real quick. Because I don't think that was state. They did look under your bed, and they did look for things, but it was to make sure that you weren't spending the welfare money injudiciously, like or for other for color TV and the like. So, it doesn't say how long it was for. It wasn't enforced for that long. I know that. Did you see the many states created and enforced the man in the house rule? Uh, in 1968, the Supreme Court struck it down. We know this. Uh... Who are the two senators? Uh, anyways, it wasn't that many states that were doing it. Man in the House. 
How many states enacted the man in the house rule? They don't even say how long it lasted. <laughs> they don't <laughs> like they're like, we don't want to talk about it. Uh okay. okay. AFDC Security Act of 1935, which is correct. Supreme Court entertained a challenge, man in the house rule, but by four children of Miss Sylvester Smith. These children were denied benefits. About the class action suit. According to the High Court, Congress did not intend that AFDC require children to look for their food to a man who is not the least obligated to support them. The court maintained that Congress used the term parent in the Social Security Act was referring to an individual who owed to the child a state-imposed legal duty to support. So it it's definitely was before 1968. So from 1935, let's say, until 1968, it was the man in the house rule because it was the 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 money was intentional for the children. It wasn't intended for anybody else but the children to help the children. Anyhow, 1968, um, two years. 1968, man in the house rule was thrown out. Now, I don't know. These men weren't born in the time that I was born in, because by the time I came into the world, the man in the house act had already been abolished. Yes, we still had social workers coming to the house, not to look for men, but to look for injudicious you know what 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 we would call in prison uh you know god i'm losing my head but <laughs> contraband what we would call contraband because what would happen it was assumed because of the lady who not only scammed the welfare system the welfare queen i don't know why she got the welfare queen moniker because she actually scammed the veterans Social Security, welfare, and anybody else she could scam. She took on many identities, had many Social Security numbers, and the reason why she was driving around in the Cadillac wasn't because of welfare alone, is because she scammed all the government of all those benefits. Veterans, Social Security, uh, welfare, what else was there? Disability, you name it, she did it. She was the welfare queen. And because of what she did, a lot of women, uh, it was assumed or presumed that black women were spending their money buying colored televisions and other things that were considered a luxury and that we didn't, that black women didn't deserve as, as a person being on welfare. So the, at the time, the, so the social worker would come into the house and look around and if you had a friend, you would unplug your television, your color television, and you would send it down to your friend's house and put up the heart, the little black and white television, so that they would know that you're living below your means. That happened all the time. My, my husband tells a story about uh, with his parents. They're like, can you watch my color television? You know, can we watch my television while they go look through my house to make sure I don't have any luxury items? That's all. That's what I grew up. No, and it wasn't looking for men. It was judicial, making sure that you weren't spending that money inappropriately because of the welfare queen, the real welfare queen who scammed the government and ended up going to jail. And Ronald Reagan made her the face of the black woman on welfare, even though most black women were not driving Cadillacs and wearing fur coats. Not on welfare, you weren't. As a teenager, young man and woman get pregnant, this is the two-year plan. First two years are debt-free. You don't have to pay the government anything back. So she doesn't get to draft them in the court and say, and the court doesn't say, you owe us money for investing in your child through food programs, through early Head Start programs. Because in those two years, 
the boy has the option or not an option. He has a demand of the co-man to then go to a trade school. You have to go to a trade school, which incentivizes the United States to do it because we need more trades people. We don't have enough carpenters. We don't have enough electricians. We don't have enough people building roads. In my community, the girls are going to college and graduating. They have no men to marry because the boys are not going to college in the same way. My teachers were married to trades. My teacher, who we call doctor, her, 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 her husband owns a locksmith company. Her husband was a okay. was a carpenter, was a mechanic. So they had a good life. Their kids went to school right the same schools we went to. I think that the incentive to solving the child support problem and a part of solving our infrastructure problem is to incentivize young boys who have gotten a girl pregnant. You must now go through two years of trade school. Oh, wait a minute. So, okay, I like what you're saying. Let me give you the rest of the answer. Like, okay, go ahead. As, after that boy graduates, you get a further incentive if you and the girl marry. If you and the girl marry, we'll give you these incentives. Zero. I'm getting a headache. You mean to tell me that since black men don't marry anyways, this man is going to go to this trade school and then he's going to get up and turn around and marry this girl because he has an incentive to marry her. Black men, right? We're talking about black men who don't, who they don't marry. Black men. Okay. I really want to go into it and delve deep into it, but it's. I don't. I don't think I want to. Never mind. Zero finance, home loans, something out of hood besides an apartment with a leaky faucet and rats and roaches in it, but incentivize marriage, which then strengthens our community, the black community, and strengthens the greater community because now you have more American marriages. You have people with stronger financial stability and you have trans people married to women of education and you begin to recreate communities like what Auburn Avenue was, what Edward was. I believe you can do this from the executive order because the money that Ford funnels down from the feds through the states to help mothers, then it can be attached. Well, we're not only helping mothers, we're helping fathers too. If a boy gets a woman pregnant, not only does she receive tanner, I see your face, you right? Good idea. If a boy, if a woman receives tanner, she receives good, the boy now has a must. You're Is it me or does this sound like he's piggybacking off women? You know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like he thinks that women are having it really, really good and really, really easy. And they're going to Mexico on vacation with TANF and food stamps. You know, all their lives are great. And I want to come in and have a little bit of that, too. So I'm going to shimmy my way in there and I'm going to say to the government, you got to. You got to give me some money. You got to put me in a situation where I can also partake in the good life that my girlfriend that I don't have any intention of being with is partaking of. I want to I want a piece of that. That's what it sounds like to me. That he the men want to, again, piggyback off what the woman is doing. So if she's had a good life and she's getting this and she's getting TANF and she's getting um, food stamps and she's getting this wick and, and she's getting all of this stuff, then we want that stuff too. How do, how do you get us in there to get it? Why can't you just go to school? There are plenty of grants. There are plenty of programs. There are plenty of There are plenty of people who want to help you go to school. Nothing pleases white people more than sending a black man to school. I did this. They want you to go to school. They will pull the money out of there and pay for you to go to school. Why do you need the government to help you go to school? 
And why does it need to be something that is reliant on the woman getting pregnant with your baby? Because that just doesn't make sense to me. So if she gets pregnant, and assuming that she wants to marry you, because he, he uh, we, we we want him to have an incentive to get married. Assuming she wants to marry you, you just complain that you did not want to take care of the baby. You just complain that you did not want to take. You don't want to pay child support. So now, you're saying to young men, "Go get a woman pregnant, and your school can be paid for. Go get a woman pregnant." And your life can be taken care of. Is is that what I'm hearing? That will require right now to go to trade school. And in those two years, what you put out on the other side is a person who's a trained, a person who has an incentive to marry, and a person who becomes a taxpayer and not just a taker of tax. I think that that's the yeah, an answer. I, I just got to jump in because Mike just took us to church, and Ms. Penny, yeah. that would also help with my issue and help us to reduce the number of abortions in the black community because now we I got it. I knew she was going to sideline. But I think that's the answer, sir. And I'll get out of y'all's way. All right. I, I got some all right, questions all right. for you. Yeah. Ruby? Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. So you are keep on the camera time. You just because <laughs> yeah, uh, you know I love to hear a solution that I really believe in. But yeah. I, I I'm having trouble getting my mind around this. So there's a how do you compel somebody to go to school? Is it you just make a requirement the same way you compel them on probation? Mean a requirement how do you compel you... me to go to drug courts when I'm probate? I don't want to go you to jail. Do that, right? Yeah, I don't want to go. I, I'm serving five years federal time. I know the drug courts gives me 18 months off. I'm not a junkie, but I'm gonna go act like one because you're gonna let me out at 18 months earlier. Yeah, I'm a boy. I know where the child support should be. So what is happens if you say I'm not going to school or you flunk out? Then you know what you're not gonna flunk out of trade school because because <laughs> we're gonna put our arms around you and people like. Like Georgia Youth Bill and people like you know Atlanta Trade. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're gonna give you milk, and we're gonna give you cookies, and we're gonna dance around the maple. And if you're really, really good, you get to have a nice little nappy during your playtime in Tweed School. What the frick are you talking about? Seriously, you're not gonna fail trade school. That's a good question, though. How are you going to force somebody to go to trade school? If they didn't want to go to school, if they didn't finish high school, how are they going to trade school? I mean, sometimes I think black folks live in an alternate reality because he's not looking around and paying attention to the to the fact that more kids are not going to school at all. They don't want anything to do with school. And he's sitting here talking about, let's, let's get them into trade school. And he, what if they fail? Oh, they're not gonna fail. We're gonna put our arms around them. We're gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna hug them and love them. We're gonna give them some nice little donuts on your special day. And if they're really, 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 really good, we will give them some apple juice. Yeah. Apple juice. So we'll make sure that you do not fail trade school. I'm getting tired. I really am getting tired. This is taking. This is taking me. It's taking me. Well, and you're a drug addict. You just don't show up for trade school. Yeah, yeah. You flunk out. Yeah, yeah. Well, then what happens? Well, I don't think most young boys want to fuck out of trade school. Oh, but what happens to the ones that do? Do the ones that do? The, the, the ones that do, I think, are a smaller margin, and the fate has already shown what happened. You'll and, and, that and what is the, what well, is the same? This is what happens. Okay. What happens is they take your driver's license, mm -hmm. which takes your oh, ability okay. to drive a box truck so you can't work for Amazon. Mm -hmm. What happens is they take your ability to get a passport. So even if you learn something like welding under one welding, you can't work offshore because you can't go out the country. Mm -hmm. What happens is for the rest of your life, you're glad, you, you damn near have felon status because you are old debt that's compounding. So the opposite of that is. Go to school for two years, mm -hmm. learn how to cut hair, learn how to lay a floor, learn how to lay some wire, and you don't have that. 
Our boys, it's not that they don't want to go to school. We used to have trade schools in high school when your uncle was president. Yeah, yeah. It's not that our kids, I didn't yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, it's not, it's not that our kids want to be chubby. Your Lord knows I eat a lot, but I still got to get up and move my body in the morning. We took, we took um, physical fitness out of school. Yeah. We took, even in matters of guns. What is it about black men who want to go back to the 60s? Was there something in the 60s that was really, really helpful to black men? What What is it about the 60s that they always want to go back to the 60s and talk about all the stuff that they did in the 60s? They do realize that the reason why a lot of these programs were cut was because the kids were crazy, right? He wants to talk about uh, they 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 had guns in school and they could take marksmanship. Right. You realize why we don't do that because of school shootings, right? Like, <sighs> we took my mother took marksmanship in school. She yeah. learned how to shoot a boy now. So there's so much that we've taken out of school that we're robbing our kids anyway. But again, I agree that a lot has been taken out of school. I agree that it's is, you know, I don't think that the kids are really learning anything of importance or something. They're, they're not learning enough to see what they're learning is important and how it applies to life. I agree with that. I have always said that for years myself. There is nothing in school that they are learning that is going to apply in life. They're not, the part of learning and being educated is learning how to apply your education in real life. And most kids don't know how to do that. Most kids don't even care. Half of the stuff they learn, it's all sugar-coated and it, they wait till they get to college and they really learn things. And then they're upset because none of this applies to life. I agree with that. Let me just say I agree with that point. But then the discussion should be, how do we put, how do we make education better? It sh should be the, the word of the day. How do, should, how do we make education better? How do we put, edu you know, how do we educate our boys and our children so that when they leave high school, they're equipped? to deal with the world how do we do that that's the question not about child support and and trying to wrangle people in the marriage so they can get money no how do we improve the educational system in our community that should be the question how do we prepare our kids for the world that they're about to face So, see, his plan isn't all bad. It's just tied up in a bunch of other stuff that don't really need to be there. But, no, I agree. that. But that should be the discussion. How do we do that? I really believe what fixed the child support and welfare and by proxy Angela's abortion issue, what fixes that is stop focusing on just the half that gets pregnant because two people get pregnant. That's right. The, the, the woman gets pregnant and the man gets I hate that dumb woman. I don't mean to be mean, but that's right. No, it, two people don't get pregnant. One person gets pregnant. Believe me. Now, my husband may have uh, had sympathy stuff with me because he was my husband. But if y'all not together in a relationship, that man does not have sympathy things with you. He doesn't share in your pain. He doesn't share your feet swelling. He doesn't share your morning sickness. He doesn't share your body change. He doesn't share that with you. He doesn't share those bizarre cravings. He doesn't share those emotional uh, ups and downs or those uh, hormones. He doesn't share those. And I'm tired of men trying to muscle in on what women are doing. No, you do not share. The two of us are not freaking pregnant. One of us is. One of us is nursing this child. One of us is feeding this child. One of us' body is changing, not yours. Ugh. 
I think that's what's annoying me about this whole conversation that he's having right here. Men trying to bustle in on what women are doing. Oh, women have this. So let me go in there. Why can't we have that too? We need help. We need. We have to have. Go get your own. There is. There are programs for men. I used to work in places where there were programs for men. There are programs for men out there. Go get your program. I don't understand why every time a woman gets something, men have to come muscle in and make it something about them. No, you do not share in pregnancy. We are not pregnancy twins. I'm pregnant. I'm carrying this baby. This is my body. It ain't ours. It's mine. I'm responsible. Y'all quick to say, eh, 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 eh. all you have to do is go outside and jog a little bit and, and stop eating burgers, assuming that people gain weight because of their burgers. Oh, you're responsible for your own body. But see, that's how men think all the time. If it's yours and they can benefit off of it, then it's ours in their mind. Oh, see, it's both of ours. We have. No, we don't. When it's theirs, it's, it's all mine. You need to go get your own. Look, you need to sign this prenup because it's mine. I have to protect myself. But if all of a sudden I have some money, oh, it's ours. It's our money. It's us together. I see us as a family. See, we are pregnant because see, he's going to benefit off of her, piggyback off of her, what she's going through. He got her pregnant. He could have put on a condom. Condoms are free. Go down to the Planned Parenthood. They give them away. Free condoms. It never occurred to you to tell young men to wrap it up? That never occurred to you? Hey, don't get women pregnant. Hey, don't do that. If you don't want to be a father and you're not ready to be in, in the relationship with this young woman, the best course of action is not to get pregnant. Wear condoms. Condoms could maybe, possibly, most assuredly, lessen, and I'm using that word. Yes, I'm using that word. But it certainly could <laughs> never mind, it's too much like making sense. Cause we wouldn't have nearly as many single mothers if men were condoms. Uh Sometimes when I'm on TikTok and, and I say that, why can't men just wear condoms? You can't believe how outrageously, ridiculously, absurdly upset they get about that. Wear a condom. Why can't you wear a condom? You know that women can possibly get pregnant with birth control. She could really be on birth control and still get pregnant. It's small, it's minute, but it's still a probability, a possibility. Why would you throw yourself into the wind on a, on a minute probability when you could just wrap it up and not have to worry about that at all? You could decrease single motherhood. You could decrease it just by wearing a condom. But this man here has a plan. If I get her pregnant, then I get some of that welfare too. And I get I get to have some help for what I need. And I gotta and I get to do what I need to do. And then I don't have to pay child support because see, I'm getting help and she getting help. And see, listen to what he's gonna say next. He's pregnant because financially, if he does not hold up this financial responsibility. Ability, the courts will call him to task. I'm saying instead of using the money to call, use the courts to call these young men to task, let's get these young men. You're 16, you got a girl pregnant, 
All right, it used to be the girl would have to drop out of school, go have the baby, come back. All right, young man, we're going to pull you out of school. You now have to go to alternative school. This alternative school, now you go to the Booker T. Washington Alternative School. At the Booker T. Washington um, Alternative School, you will do reading, writing, and arithmetic, but you have to pick a elective that you can master in two years. And when you graduate, we are graduating a worker that can then go work on many of the things that our government needs from an infrastructure standpoint. He can support his child, whether through child support, or we can further incentivize through marriage, saying if these two young kids marry now, we will pay for her two years of associate's degrees, and we will, we will give this family subsidies, much like a farm, for the next two years until they stay. And then, and then how is the child taken care of during the two years that they We still give them the welfare. <laughs> All of the federal and state funding and accounting is valid. They, she still gets that funding. Right now, that funding counts against the boy. <laughs> it counts against him because the court is in car and the court calls and it's saying, you owe us this money. I didn't have 60 grand when the court told me I owe 60 grand. So I had to go oh, figure God. out getting 60 Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny as heck that is funny as heck he didn't even think about the baby he thought about he gonna get some money she gonna get some money we gonna get some money <laughs> and Robert F. Kennedy said well who's gonna take care of the baby oh she's we still gonna get the money <laughs> I can't laugh at that anymore because yesterday when I was when I was recording, was it yesterday, the day before yesterday when I actually recorded this um the first time, I was laughing so hard because the whole idea, like you know how the ideas are conjured up in your mind and you try to try to make sense of them. And I kind of see things in pictures. So I was trying to like make sense of the idea and the more I kept trying to make sense of the idea the sillier it became and then when um, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. asked what about the baby who's going to take care of the baby I lost it because <laughs> he was so busy taking the, thinking about how how the men were going to get help what the men were going to do all this money we were going to have we're going to have oh we're going to have um education we're gonna to go to trade school yeah we're gonna force her to marry and and then after we force her to marry and after we get what we got then we're gonna get her to get her her associate's degree and then after this then we're gonna do that i mean it sounds so oh my god it sounds so pedantic is that the word let me look it up i used it the other day but it does it sounds like It sounds like a, a child, you know, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and we're going to punch like this and then we're going to kick him like that and then when we pick him up, we're going to wrestle him like this. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the baby? Oh, yeah, the baby. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's how this thing all got started in the first place, right? The baby, yeah. It sounds ridiculous. That's not the word I wanted to use. There's another word. But um, that's funny. That's so funny. <laughs> After this, we're going to do that. I want to know where he's going to get that money from. He does understand how taxes work, right? So not only are they going to still give the woman welfare, all right? The man is not going to pay child support, okay? He's going to go to trade school, all right? Even if he's a junkie and he don't want to go to trade school, the community of men are going to seek him out. They're going to bring him to trade school. They're going to love on him and hug on him and, and, and kiss on him and, and just, just smother him with brotherhood. And he's going to make it through trade school. There almost should be a little, like, a little catchy theme behind it. I came through trade school thanks to my brothers in the community. And then after he gets through trade school, then we're going to get her some trade school. And then 
that, after she goes to college for two years, which she can do anyways, because there are grants and educational supplements for her to go to school without this program and still get welfare, she doesn't need the man to do any of these things. She's been doing them. She doesn't need him to do any of these things. So now he's going to do those things and more. But only because the man is going to muscle in on what the children need. Welfare is for children. And he's going to muscle in and he's going to take the welfare from his children. And he's going to give it to himself. So that he can have an opportunity to have a life. So that he can have an opportunity to advance. The woman has the baby. She carried the baby for nine months. She's nursing the baby. She's changing the baby. She's bathing the baby. In other words, I'm saying all of this to say that she is solely responsible for that baby for those first so many months. And she's going to go to school. Because now you can go to school at home. You don't have to physically go leave your home. So she's, she can go to school at home, at her computer, at her laptop. Take the babies, put the babies down, take, uh, put the baby down, take her course, take her test, get her grants, get her loans. What does she need the man for? Why do you need to spend money on a program to get her through and get her an associate's degree? This is a clever way of also downgrading her. Because whereas the woman before had a bachelor's degree, You know, uh, uh, what what is the other associates, bachelors, and PhD? Now he's like, well, she can just get her associate's degree. You know, she she can get that, but she can go and get her bachelor's. He ain't got to be stuck with you, with incentives to marry you. See, this is his way. There, this is their way of tying the rock around the woman, so she can be. Uh, so they can be inexorably tied together. So when she goes, he's going to come along with her, but except he's going to be the weight that keeps her down. This is bullshit. I'm losing interest in this real fast. Like, I'm really losing interest. I'm getting tired. It's taking my energy. Great. Are you talking yeah, hypothetically, yeah. or did that actually happen to you? Yeah, yeah. I paid on five thousand dollars in child support. Yeah, because you yeah, can't, you can't adjudicate procreation. That's yeah. the problem. Hold on, hold on. Don't be worried. Don't be, before no, we get no, to the no, word, no, hold on. Before, no, before, no, before, no, before, no, before, before, before we get to the just let me finish this part because he's a lawyer. He understands. <laughs> what I'm saying is, <clears throat> I gave a mother of my children a thousand dollars for a birthday party. The birthday party fell through. I gave another thousand the following week. In the following week, she went to court and said he hasn't given me anything in, in years. And that's not, not true. What she was was a desperate woman, and she needed more money. And instead of sitting down with us and us you having gave her a $1,000 cash? I gave her $1,000 cash. I had just had a second we had a trust relationship. We made love. We made a child. So mm -hmm. I wasn't that's handling it. I wasn't. He owes sixty thousand dollars in child support. He gave her a thousand dollars. He gave her two thousand dollars. And he wants to argue that he gave her two thousand dollars. This is starting to get on my damn nerves. This is getting on my damn nerves. Are you serious? Like you gave $2,000 for a birthday party. But you're $60,000 in the hole for child support. And you couldn't understand how she could see 
that you chose not to pay child support? Like, it's it sounds like you chose not to pay child support and give money when you want to. And then got angry with her because she said, okay, you gave me $2,000. I'm trying to understand. I'm not feeling well. I don't try to. I don't want to try to understand. Never mind. I mean, it speaks for itself. He just he just opened his mouth and said ah, and all the stuff came out. I he gave two thousand dollars, but he's sixty thousand dollars in arrears. And then she she of course she goes to the child support and says, look, he hasn't given me anything in years. You didn't. How does two thousand dollars equal sixty thousand dollars in arrears? That doesn't make any sense. What did they say? The math isn't mathing. Handling it as though it was business, but it's business, and young men don't understand that. So what I'm saying is to get that part of the business that was have a woman so desperate, she says, "Well, I got to go lie to a court." And to have a young man say, but you are sixty thousand dollars in arrears, and you only gave her two thousand dollars. That's coming out of your own mouth. She didn't lie. Well, I gotta do anything I can do to pay it. The government has an incentive at this time. Our government says we need infrastructure workers. Our government says we need more kids going to trade school. What better experiment or way to prove that that system works than taking child support where 70% of kids are born out of wedlock, taking child support where most of our young men are not going to college at the level they did and say, well, trade school is an answer, not only for this young man and his financial situation, this young woman, but also what our government is going to need in terms of private people. I think that the ultimate answer is in bringing trades back in high school. Better sex education with young men. I think that could be a federal program that comes into barbershops, that goes into schools as young as, um, I would say, middle school. It starts to teach boys about their sexual funding. I think condoms should be free. I think yeah. that boys should be taught how to use condoms. Condoms are free. They do teach sex education in school. I mean... I'm almost done with this. I'm almost done. Tackling urban challenges. What urban challenges? These are the challenges. Trade schools. They have trade schools. They do. They advertise how they want young men to come in and learn how to be electricians, learn air conditioning, learn... I think that there are lots of things that we can do to cure the child support problem, but while curing that problem... I want to also add, he realizes that AI is taking over everything, that a lot of jobs are not going to exist. They're working on that. Never mind. Let him cook. Building a workforce that this country is going to need in the next 20 years. And I think what you do is marry the need to have money, which boys have, especially ones who've gotten girls, with the need for infrastructure and builders in this country. You marry that and you radically change our welfare and HUD program. Our HUD program shouldn't be if you're getting money and you and the boy are not married, you can't live together. It should be if you and this boy aren't married, you're getting money for two years. If he goes to school, you're rent free. You don't have to worry about that. If you guys marry, your two years turns into four years. And if this young man graduates, then we 
you automatically give him a job and give him preference for a government job and building infrastructure. I, I know this your house, bro. No, no, I'm finna get out your way. I, 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 I think that's a good idea. Uh, I, I, I like it. I need to talk. To you talk we'll talk about more about it. No, can you All right, and, and one other question. Yes, sir. Do you want to be vice president? No, because he has that. Can you please, R -F -R -K, R -K, please explain what adjudicate procreation means or adjudicate means? Why, why Mike, please, because he's the one who said he doesn't know what that means. Because you can't adjudicate procreation. Of course not. You, you know, and that's what's happening, right? With all this, all these. <laughs> oh, sorry, he's looking at him like. This man is a lawyer. He's a lawyer. Oh my God, Lord. <laughs> Explain to him what adjudicate means. Wow. Explain to him what adjudicate. The lawyer. Explain to the lawyer what adjudicate means. And you can't adjudicate procreation. <laughs> look at the look on his face. He said, of course not. Like. You know, I'm truly convinced. That thinking amongst certain people may be a dangerous pastime. I'm just really getting bored with this. I'm bored. I am very bored. I I want to address this too. Can somebody help me? Because I recall in HUD that the boyfriends could live with the girlfriends as long as they were on the lease. What they didn't allow was people to have extensive stay on the lease and then pay, like, the same rent. No, the man couldn't come in there and just live there and not, contri like, not contribute to the money or, or um, to the household income. But if he was contributing to the household income, he could live there. The problem is that the men would like to come in under the radar and keep the rent cheap and then live there and not take responsibility. That's what HUD did. They didn't say that men couldn't live there. They just said that you had to be a part of the household income so that they could uh, rightfully, uh, you know, decide how much rent you should pay based on the income of the household. And a lot of men would come in there and try to go in under the radar. They do, oh, she got cheap rent. Oh, she got this, she got that. And just live there and not contribute to the household. And this is where the problem would arise. HUD didn't say you couldn't live, you know, couples couldn't live together with their families. They never said that. That's illegal. But what they could, what they did do is they restricted how long a guest could stay at your house. Right? Because, uh, you know, they have to be responsible. Insurance, usually, when women would allow men to come live in their houses and they had to get out, they would destroy property. So a lot of times, no, men were not allowed to be in the house unless they were part of the family structure and contributed to the income of the household. That's why. But to deny them, they didn't do that. And a lot of men were gigolos. They just wanted to come in and live cheap and, and play loud music and, and run the household and, and not pay any money and live dusty lives. And so HUD was like, no, we're not going to do that because then when she gets tired of you and she, you, she wants you to get out, you, you're volatile. And it puts the woman and the children at risk. So you either part of the household or you get out. 
that's how that whole thing ran with men. It's all these terms, all these laws, all this legislation, right? And so, so if you can't adjudicate procreation, man gives life, a woman gives birth. So if we're gonna let's stop with the democracy. But, 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 yeah, but okay, I, I mean, just going back, are you arguing that? A man, if he gets a woman pregnant, should have no obligation. To absolutely not. All right. So no, then, no, absolutely. Not. So it's just the amount of obligation, the, the term of. of that well, obligation. well, well, it's it's hard coming from me being a person of covenant instead of contract. When you lay down with a woman, yeah, that, that's a covenant. But when you go get a marriage certificate, now that's a when contract. Was covenant? And so when was the covenant made? When was the covenant made? What covenant? How many baby mamas do you have, Mr. Covenant? With Covenant. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. These men. You can't adjudicate. What the frick are you talking about? I mean... Robert Kennedy Jr., man. What an exercise in control. What a 48 laws of power dude this is. Listening, actively questioning, and keeping his... I'm bored already. I I mean, I feel like I've been numbing my mind for like an hour now. How long have I been on here? I feel like I've been numbing my mind for an hour. Just numb. It gets worse, doesn't it? Ladies, all I got to say is is this. If this is what you want to procreate with, if this is it for you, you look at these sterling minds here, and this is what you want to replicate, then I don't, I don't know what else to say to you. I don't know what to say to you. Because if, if you're looking at this and you're thinking that this is it right here, these Thinking men. This is this is a boring ass conversation with simple minded people. I I'm I'm about ready to, to tie this up. This is ridiculous. This is an absurd conversation. This is an absurd conversation. I'm not sitting here pretending to be some sterling intellect. God knows, you know. But for God's sakes, is this it right here? I, I, I. Time you're working in contracts then it's going to be about money and so if a woman if you break up with her and now she's vindictive or if the man's vindictive now the child suffers because i'm going to make this man pay for leaving me or i'm not going to be seeing this child because you left me and so i'm not going to do anything most women want their children to see their father i believe that the most the biggest disappointment and the, the biggest heartbreak is that the woman wants the man to come pick up the kids and he doesn't show up. That's the disappointment. She wants him to be a father to the children and he isn't. That's the disappointment. Not that she she broke up. There are some women who are enraged that it's as old as time. Read books. Read lots of books. There are a lot of women who are enraged. There are a lot of men who are enraged when the relationship ends but my god most people want their children to know their father the only reason and and there are a few only reasons 
is if the child is in some sort of danger, we don't have to enumerate what they would be. But we understand that if a child is in danger, then no. This is crazy. This is absolutely positively crazy. So they're going to explain to a lawyer what adjudicate means. They're going to tell a lawyer that you can't adjudicate procreation. Man gives life and woman gives birth. They really ought to tell that to God, you know? I'm telling you. <laughs> I said this before. I had a discussion, I think it was on TikTok some time ago, and I said, this is men's last gasp at being relevant because now they want to muscle in so badly on uh, being relevant. They're not relevant, and they want to muscle in on it. There are billions and billions of sperm in the world stored up in banks. Japan spends billions of dollars, not on men, but on women. Because what is more valuable, the sperm or the woman who carries it? They, women don't even need men. They just want them to get pr pregnant. They prefer that you be in a couple because it has already been established for long before there is Christianity that a man and a woman in a happy relationship makes for a stable environment. So they would prefer you to be in a happy partnership. But in the interest of the population that's going to fall off soon and men's panic because they feel that they're going to be extinct. And if women decide not to have babies, that means them, they can't replicate. And the stronger women get in that pursuit, shouts out to the 4B movement, the more afraid the men become. So now they want to be relevant they want to be relevant we have something to do with it what's inside you has something to do with it which by the way could be extracted from you even if you were unalived we really don't even need it because it's billions of them the thing that they can't do as they can't recreate the womb. They say they're getting close, but the womb is very complicated. They know it is. Blood vessels, nerves, uh, how it all works, how it all feeds the baby, how it all, that's very complicated. They still need women to carry the babies. Still necessary. That's who they're trying to convince. Chinese are trying to convince women to go back to the home. Think about home and family. Who are they trying to convince? They're not trying to convince men. No. They want women. All those patriarchal societies who thought men were the value because men can go out there and make a name for themselves and bring success and honor to the family are beginning to realize that, mm, no, well, mm, yeah, they could maybe, but no. What brings value to a society is a woman. They're watching their populations die because women say, we no longer want to carry babies. We no longer want to be mothers. We want to enjoy our lives. 
We want to be happy. We want to be educated. We want to spend the money the way we want to spend our money. These patriarchal societies are realizing a little bit too late, maybe, that they bet on the wrong horse. Like I said, Japan is spending billions on child care, giving money away, on uh, you name it, all the infrastructure necessary to make it easier for mothers to give birth to children. Why? Because children are valuable and they still need mothers. Mother Earth. The whole of nature is feminine. But I'm not getting into that. Let's go. For the child. So it goes both ways, right? Yeah. Well, men and women do that. Mm -hmm. But most of the time you see men getting taken advantage of in the court system because they've adjudicated procreation. And so at the end of the day, if I give life and she gives birth, there has to be some accountability to the system to say, well, let's go have some ease on the person that gave the life because you can have a bunch of soil. But if those no seeds, we have no children. They got plenty of seed, sir. Plenty. Billions and billions of sperm in banks. They do come to a conclusion. Both parents are responsible by law for the children. Child support is this. This is how it is adjudicated. They look at what the mother makes, and they look at what the father makes, and they can put the money to together, and that's how they come up with the sum to how much you should be contributing contributing to the benefit of your children. That's not a lot of money. You think it's a lot of money because you don't want to do anything, but you don't want to do anything. You don't, I, I don't sense or observe that a, a great many of you have uh, aspirations in life. You just want to get your 40, you know, your little job, work, come home. How much is the average child support payment? Five thousand one hundred and fifty a month. Child support payment are averaged annually. Excuse me, five thousand five five thousand one hundred fifty annually, or four hundred and thirty dollars a month. About eighty five percent of providers of child support are male, and fifteen percent were female. Annual child support payments average five thousand. 400, know, from um, male providers. Okay, that's 2012. That's a while ago. Oh my goodness. Even my phone is bored. It's bored. It's so bored. Oh, the great conversations, the great conversations, the great uh, conversations. Anyways, 5000 so $430 a month, which is roughly about $100 a week. That is what I used to pay daycare 20 years ago. Okay, this is what I wanted to know. The process for calculating basic child support is extensively outlined below. What did they say? To calculate basic child support, we must first identify each parent's gross income. The statute requires the addition and subtraction of many different types of income. All of the additions and subtractions can be found 
and then they do that. They pr your tax return. However, to come up with a very rough estimate for most cases, take the parent's gross income on their most recent income tax return. Right, right, right. If the non-custodial parent income is less than the amount designated under New York Self-Support Reserve, the presumptive amount will reduce the non-custodial parent's income below the reserve of the guidelines. Then the child support obligation will be substantially limited based on his or her income. So what are you talking about? All right, so they said that you, you add both the incomes. We also determine the pro rata, uh, pro rata share for each parent based upon how much they each contribute to the combined parental income. John has a gross income of 82000 and Mary, the custodial parent, has a gross income of 37000 Calculate the combined income. John's pro rata share and Mary's pro rata share. John's gross income is 82000 plus Mary's income is 37000 equals a combined income of $120,000. Pro, John's pro rata share is then calculated by dividing 82000 against 120000 for a pro rata share of 68.97. Mary's pro rata share is then calculating by dividing 37000 against 122,000 for her pro rata share of 31.03%. So, because he makes more money, he pays more income. This is a little arbitrary. I'm a little upset with that. Let me see. Joe Morosky. I'm a matrimonial and family law attorney here at the law firm of Melvin and Melvin. I'm here today to discuss child support, specifically who pays and how much. First, who pays? The non-custodial parent pays the custodial parent. Who is the non-custodial parent? The non-custodial parent is either the parent who has the children for the shorter period of time, or in a case of a shared custody, it is the parent who is the higher earner. Thank you. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Specifically, who pays and how much? First, who pays? The non custodial parent pays the custodial parent. Who is the non custodial parent? The non custodial parent is either the parent who has the children for the shorter period of time, or in a case of a shared custody, it is the parent who is the higher earner. How much is paid? Child support can either be agreed upon by the parties or there is a statute that determines how much the non-custodial parent will pay. That amount can be anywhere from 17% to 35%, depending on the number of children. In addition, parents also have to contribute toward the cost of uncovered health care and child care in certain situations. If you have questions regarding child support, feel free to call me child care in certain situations. Right. If you have questions regarding child support, feel free to call me, Joe Morosky, here at the Melvin and Melvin Law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's pretty much it. Whoever pay, makes the most money pays the child support. So the court can deviate. So the non-custodian pr provides all transportation, 
The child resides at the non-custodial parents 49% of the time. The non-custodial parent pays a substantial amount in union fees, dues, and student loans. The non-custodial parent provides for the child's cell phone. Yeah, for all those little expenses that we don't talk about when the child is young. Does that make sense, though? Yeah. They incentivize based on their performance to put people on child support. So therefore, the system, that child support system is working exactly the way it was designed. But it goes, but but the child support, the abortion, and all those things are all collective things for, in my summation to stop procreation anyway for melanated people in America. If we go back to having indigenous ways and live under theocracy instead of just a democracy, uh -huh. theocracy was saying, let's obey the laws of the most high. Let's obey the laws of the land for real. Not, not the laws of man. The laws of the land say if it's cold, you get a jacket. If it's hot, you get some shade. If you plant a seed, it creates a harvest and you can have fruit or, or vegetation. But we're obeying the laws of man. And so when we start obeying the laws of man, now we get out of theocracy and we go to democracy. And, and the prefix to democracy is demon. Look how smug he is. Look how smug he is. This dude talking about we want to live under a theocracy. This man is so... He think he educated Robert Kennedy Jr. He, he really thinks he educated this man. He thought he spit bars. Look at him. He thinks he ate at the table and left no crumbs. The laws of God. Y'all can't even obey the laws of God. Y'all don't even obey. The, you don't even know what's in the book. Much less obey the book. What book are we talking about as a theocracy? The Bible? The Quran? The Torah? What book are we talking about? What God are we serving? My God, these people are insane. This is insane. This is so insane. This doesn't make any kind of sense whatsoever. What God are you talking about? Theocracy. I guess you want us to go back to feudal times under the theocracy. Did you see how the Taliban treated women? And men under the theocracy? Do you even understand what a theocracy is? You can't get anybody to. Let's get through this. And that's why the system is demonic. <laughs> <laughs> so we need people. We need people to come against no, that. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Did, did Robert of Kitty D just laugh? Accountability to. The system to say, well, let's go have some ease on the person that gave the life because you can have a bunch of soil. But if those no seeds, we have no children. The thing is, the, the, Does that make sense, though? They yeah. Incentivize based on their performance to put people on child support. So therefore, the system, that child support system is working exactly the way it was designed. But it goes. But, but the child support, the abortion and all those things are all collective things for, in my summation to stop procreation anyway for melanated people in America. If we go back to having indigenous ways and live under theocracy instead of just a democracy, uh -huh. theocracy was saying, let's obey the laws of the. You live in a republic, not in a democracy. We don't have true democracy. We have a republic, a republic that practices democracy, but it's not a democracy. It's a republic. Oh, God. The most high. Let's obey the laws of the land for real. Not, not the laws of man. The laws of the land say if it's cold, you get a jacket. If it's hot, you get some shade. If you plant a seed, it creates a harvest and you can have fruit or, or vegetation. But we're obeying the laws of man. And so when we start obeying the laws of man, now we get out of theocracy and we go to democracy. And, and the prefix to democracy is demon. And that's why the system is demonic. <laughs> <laughs> so we need people. We need people to come against it.
did he just say the prefix of democracy is demon? <laughs> <laughs> and Robert Kennedy just laughed. <laughs> Girl, I do not feel good. This man said, <laughs> the, the, the prefix of democracy is deep. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Did he just laugh? <laughs> he just... Pregnant should have no obligation. To absolutely not. All right. So no, then, no, absolutely. Uh, so it's just the amount of obligation. That, that yeah. It's very important. But we also know, too, that a child that receives love and attention and presence, you know, there's no dollar amount to that. So it's of like course. we're i doing the communities and the relationships wait, 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 and all wait, of wait. that. That is something that every man. Where is to, that? To lose that, ours. It needs to be fair. So therefore, assist, that child support system is working exactly the way it was designed. But it goes, but, but the child support, the abortion, and all those things are all collective things for, in my summation to stop procreation anyway for melanated people in America. If we go back to having really indigenous ways and live under theocracy, Instead of just the democracy, uh -huh. theocracy was saying, let's obey the laws of the most high. Let's obey the laws of the land for real. Uh -huh. Not not the laws of man. The laws of the land say if it's cold, you get a jacket. If it's hot, you get some shade. If you plant a seed, it creates a harvest and you can have fruit or, or vegetation. But we're obeying the laws of man. And so when we start obeying the laws of man, now we get out of theocracy and we go to democracy. And, and the prefix to democracy is demon. And that's why the system is demonic. <laughs> so we need people we need people to come against that we need people like you to say hey you you can infiltrate educate liberate and vacate that system because of your background and so we need people more agitators to do things of that nature and quickly before you go like yes the financial part of it is very important but we also know too that a child that let me just think one more time he thought he could fruit or, or vegetation but we're obeying the laws of I me mean, when i go to pick up my kids and there's, there's not not the laws of man the laws of the land say if it's cold you get a jacket if it's hot you get some shade if you plant a seed it creates a harvest and you can have fruit or, or vegetation but we're obeying the laws of man and so when we start obeying the laws of man now we get out of theocracy and we go to democracy and, and the prefix to democracy is demon and that's why the system is demonic <laughs> <laughs> so we need people we need people to come against that we need people like you to say hey you you can infiltrate educate liberate and vacate that system because of your background and so we need people more agitators to do things of that nature and quickly before you go like yes the financial part of it is very important but we also know too oh my that God. a child that receives love and attention and presence you know there's no dollar amount to that so it's like we're, we're fighting. So in short, they don't you know, want that, child the grand, the they don't scheme want to pay. Is, is only a portion of what a child like... needs. You know, I know for me in my experience, you know, it's it's tough to go to a school and you can't get, you know, grades or you can't hear what's going on or I got to fight a doctor in order to get, you know, medical records or anything like that. I really got to go in there and buck and tell them I know my rights. And then these people still get on the phone and say, hey so and so is it okay for this dad to get like that is not okay you know what i mean when i go to pick up my kids and there's there's a struggle at the front office you know all of these different things and even when you're paying child support and doing the right thing the system is not doing the correct thing by making sure that you're sticking to your parents and plan 
So she could just buck and do what she want to do just because, and I just got to sit there. I call the police. I make all the reports. I do all the right things. That gets exhausted. But if I miss one payment, it's a problem. And it's not, again, it's for people with status. It's for people without status. Like, this is something that is definitely hurting our community, I feel like. With the research and everything that I know, it's guys, I know other, I used to play in the league. There's guys right now that's in jail, you know, behind child support. There, there's guys right now that can't travel, can't work, because they don't have identification. This is this is a huge thing. So even if we create jobs to do this or do that, we're still running into an issue if the other side, if there's a problem and you're not on the same page in regards to raising your child. So that's why for me, that was like my biggest issue because as much work as I do in the communities and the relationships and all of that, that is something that every man mm-hmm. comes together and it's like, right. bruh, I got to deal with this. Going the same bruh, thing. I'm going through this. Yep. Bruh, I can't believe like the amount of money I got to pay and do it. Like, we and struggling. then your you circumstances working? change and you still have to pay that amount Absolutely. of money. Absolutely. You know, I've been through that. You know, um, I mean? circumstances yeah. change and still have to pay. Um, they have, see, I, this is where you suffer from lack of knowledge. I know this to be the truth. I know this to be the truth. If you have a change of circumstances, they will ameliorate your child support. I know that for a fact. They will do it. There was a man who hadn't had a job. He couldn't get a job. He was, you know, and he had his child support reduced. You can do that. You can't sit there and not call anybody and not talk to anybody and just say, oh, I don't have a job. I can't pay. You can't do that. But if there's a change in circumstances, yes, you can call and have your your uh, child support review. I just read that. Just read that just now. You can have that done. The fact that you are telling people that they can't is is dead wrong. In fact, I'm a little ashamed of Killer Mike for having this kind of discussion because this sh- this discussion should have been around the information on how you can go ahead and ha- have your child support reduced. Especially if it's based on the amount that was set upon with you and her. That's how states come up with the amount of money to be paid. So if you're not making money, all you have to do is ask the the child support court or the the family court. You have to let somebody know. They have pro bono, I believe, for these type of cases. And they will help you. Set your set your child support. I know this because somebody had that done. He wasn't making the money he was. He ended up working at another place, and he's like, I can't make this child support obligation, but this. And then they had to go and rejigger everything, and they lowered his child support. So, This is shameful. It is shameful and boring. Boring and shameful. Shameful and boring. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, you just can't sit there and say, I don't have no job and be angry because you have to pay the same amount. You have to call and get things done. And that's the thing. I mean, it's not just sitting here shuffling your feet going, oh, yeah, this is what we have to go through. This is what we have to do. They're mean to us. They're cruel to us. We we can't. Oh, no. When did that happen? We can't do that. No, you can. You, you most certainly can have. I mean, I wasn't talking. You most certainly can. Go take care of your business. You can go have that ameliorated. Absolutely. It can be adjusted. That's crazy. That's crazy to me. This is this is the information that you want your future president to know. This is what you want to know. You want to know them to know that you do not know how. The justice system works. 
You want them to know that you don't understand anything about the federal government and the state government. You don't want you want them to know that you don't really care about your children enough to want to be responsible for them. You just open the whole suitcase and showed all your dirty underwear to the guests. Wow. Wow. I'm tired. I'm tired. Now we understand what's going on here. There's great big discussion about child support. Wow. Just wow. I can't be- I can't believe that this is what Why why am I saying that? I know perfectly well. This is what goes on all the time. This is not anything new. I don't even know why I'm pretending like I I'm not even pretending. I'm just I just I'm tired. I'm tired, I'm bored, and this is this was a dusty conversation. I can't believe it was this dusty. Anyhow, what do you think? I don't disagree that there are inequities in the child support system. I will not disagree with that. But instead of offering real solutions, they came up with some cartoony nonsense <laughs> that is more suitable to a 12 year old boy than to grown ass men who could actually contribute to society what do you think in the comments subscribe if you want I'm tired bye